Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. If you are wanting to know more about DAX, this roundup is for you. And huge shout out to the Guy in a Cube community who helped me put all of this together in a live stream yesterday. It was an awesome hour and a half where I just went through my process for how I do this. A lot of folks contributed and this is the result. All right, with that, let's dig in. Rachel Dyer from CSG Pros got a blog post looking at DAX for beginners. And it's a tutorial of just like what to keep in mind when you're working with DAX. Rachel provides a thought provoking blog. At least I thought it was thought provoking in the sense of do we do short form versus long form or minimalist versus transparency? And she goes through the blog making the case and talking about the reasons why. The other thing that's really awesome in this blog post is she is calling out the Elements of DAX video series that's available from CSG Pro. And I've got a link up above. There's a video playlist for that that you can go through and explore DAX and get going with it for free. It's out on YouTube. Good job, Rachel, on the blog post. And also, Brian Grant, thank you for putting together the video series. Alberto Ferrari's got a blog slash video looking at marking a table as a date table and why it's important to do this. And really this all comes down to time intelligence, but in true SQL BI form, Alberto goes through and explains with examples why this is needed and why it's so important. I know when talking to folks, marking a table as a day table is not very obvious and people don't necessarily think about it necessarily. And so I'm really glad that Alberto got this out there and is available for you. So go check it out. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Brian Julius over at Enterprise DNA has got a video looking at five strategies to enhance your DAX toolbox or just your skills with DAX. It's a little bit of a long video, but he goes through different approaches and different things to consider when working with DAX. And in this case, he also calls out, it works for M as well. So it's just different strategies to think about as you go through. So from formatting of your code to tools that are available to you, to also just thinking about how to search for things and how to go try things out uh, to learn those new things. I know Patrick and I talk about all the time, the way that we learn Power BI and DAX and new technologies, we go and try it. And so this video does a good job of just arming you with some of those thought processes to get you to that next level. So awesome job. Parker Stevens from BI Elite's got a video looking at how do you filter by a measure in a slicer, which is interesting, but it's pretty cool. He's got a slicer that has a min and max. And then at this point you can use that slicer to filter say total sales is his example. And he walks you through how he actually does this and it's a pretty neat trick uh, that you can use inside of your reports. It does require some tinkering. I'm all for tinkering, but just know that there are some things that you have to do to set this up and get it to work just right from whether it's getting that slicer set up to getting the total sales values to accommodate it with the values that are listed in your filter. So visual level filters, slicer, all of that. So there's some things you got to do to get this set up, but Parker walks you through all of it. It's a pretty neat treat. It's a pretty neat trick. Go check it out. I've got a link up above and down below in the description. Paula from the Excel Club is talking about avoiding transformations in DAX. And where she's leading you to is push it to Power Query instead of DAX. And I can 100% agree with this. Avoid using text transformations in DAX. Patrick and I talk about this a bunch, but there is some, you can end up hitting significant overhead by doing text transformations inside of DAX itself. It's better to try and push that as far back as you can. Paula talks about pushing it back to Power Query. I'm going to go a step further and say, push it back to the data source if you can. Can you do it in a view in SQL or something of that nature? If not, Power Query is the way to go. And as a last resort, then you would do it in DAX, but try to avoid that if you can. And she walks through a couple of things to just keep in mind when you're doing this. It is definitely a great tip and one I am fully supportive of. So check out her blog, links down below. 
We got the Power BI service and mobile feature summary for May and June of 2020. It's just a collection of a bunch of features that came out during that time. There was a bunch of stuff that ended up landing, including a bunch of things for mobile, whether it's mobile developing inside a Power BI desktop or actual updates to the mobile app, along with other things such as sensitivity labels and uh, the usage in apps. A bunch of things for premium capacity, so refresh summaries for premium, and then also deployment pipelines also came out in this time range. Tons of different features. Definitely be sure to go check out this blog post if you're not aware of what came out in May and June, so you can stay up to date on all the latest. All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.